Hi, it is Saturday, April 3rd, 2021. Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk heavyweight boxing. <clears throat> but first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, with regard to the Andy Ruiz, Chris Ariola fight, I believe Ruiz wins that fight. I believe Ruiz, who has the fastest hands in the heavyweight division, is simply too fast for Ariola. I believe Ruiz won't have to find Ariola. Ariola is going to come find him. And that actually benefits Andy, who has a hard time setting up a pocket against a mobile opponent. I also believe that Ruiz hits harder. Now, I know there's some in the sport who believe that Ruiz can't punch, one of them being Bob Arum. I disagree strongly with Bob. I've looked at the films. I think Ruiz hits much harder than advertised. Now, what I want to do here is to just take a step back. Let's talk about the heavyweight division. Then let's get back to Andy Ruiz. Because it's my belief that there are very few fighters out there who can become heavyweight champion outside of a lucky punch. Right? Andy Ruiz, who's already been heavyweight champion, is one of the few who, if things break the right way, could once again be heavyweight champion. Here's the argument. <clears throat> Fury, the best in the sport, in my opinion. Well, certainly the best at heavyweight. Right? The best heavyweight in the sport, we'll put it. Right? Fury has a two-fight deal with Joshua. Understand, that second fight might not happen. Right? Boxing is flooded with guys who had rematch clauses. Who didn't take the rematch? Right? Just understand, the way things look today might not be the way they look tomorrow. Contracts are made to be amended. If Fury dominates that fight, as I think he will, right? I'm picking Fury in that fight. The public might not have the outcry for the rematch that we assume right now the public will have. Now understand, if Andy beats Chris Ariola and that rematch of Fury Joshua does not happen for whatever reason, at least not immediately, I believe that opens the door for Andy Ruiz. Now let's be clear here. If Fury has a weakness, it's that he can't handle really fast hand speed, right? I want people to revisit that Steve Cunningham fight. Folks, Fury, who is faster than most of the other people, is completely baffled by how fast Steve Cunningham's hand speed is. Completely baffled. Also, Fury couldn't handle Cunningham's ability to slip his jab. Cunningham's legs, right? Cunningham is too far outside at times. Other times, Cunningham is close to Fury, but Cunningham's moving the upper part of his body and he's throwing his own right hands, one of which drops Fury. People forget how tough that fight was. Well, understand, Andy Ruiz has the fastest hands at heavyweight, has had them for years. In fact, I believe coming up, Andy Ruiz was a young phenom to the point where Ariola years ago sparred with Andy. Fighters like Evander Holyfield years ago sparred with Andy. They all left with the same conclusion. This guy is blindingly fast in terms of his hands. The problem with being viewed as a savant 
is that a lot of guys then take the talent part of the equation for granted and they completely forget about the dedication part. They also forget, in Andy's case, about the rest of the skills that need to be sharpened to be very successful. So Andy has three big problems, right? Three big problems. The first is that Andy, who is very accustomed to dominating people, has no back foot game. I just haven't come across the fight where the pocket breaks down on Andy, some world-class opponent is bearing down on him, and Andy decides to start fighting backing up. I don't think he has that part of his game. I don't think he's had to develop that part of his game. Well, now we're in the high rent district of the heavyweight division where heavy hitters are going to try to collapse the pocket on him. They might try to force him onto his back foot knowing that it might not exist. I understand Andy has a new trainer, Eddie Reynoso. I understand Andy's lost a lot of weight. But Andy's now in his 30s. It's going to be real hard to learn a back foot game in your 30s. Right? Fighters are going to get caught up in the moment in the ring. As Mike Tyson used to say, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Right? In the heat of battle, I don't believe in his 30s. Andy's suddenly going to remember what a coach told him about using his back foot. Andy has other problems. I believe these can be cured. A lack of foot speed. Now let me just point out that foot speed is not what we think it is. Right? It's not like you have to be born Usain Bolt to be able to move around the ring. Now let me throw out a disclaimer here. I haven't been a professional prize fighter. I've never trained a fighter. I'm just a YouTuber who likes to bet on boxing and has for years. Right? But the way I see it is that foot speed is really about rhythm. Right? Guys who you don't even consider as being fast moving understand the rhythm of boxing and know how to cut off the ring. What I want people to do here, and he died the other day, so I was looking at some of his old fights. What I want people to do is to revisit the first round of the great marvelous Marvin Hagler against Thomas the Hitman Hearns. Now understand, Hearns is taller than Hagler. Right? In my opinion, Hearns had the faster hands. Tommy Hearns is busy throwing punches. Tommy Hearns was a knockout puncher, hence the nickname, Hitman, right? Destroy champion Pimpino Cuevas in two rounds to get the title. Tommy had a punch. But as you revisit that round, if you're thinking just in terms of foot speed and stuff like that, I want you to notice how Marvin Hagler, with Thomas Hearns throwing punches, heavy punches, not jabs, I'm talking about heavy punches, straight hands and hooks. But yet Marvin Hagler understood that there's a rhythm, right? Tommy throws one right hand. He can't throw an immediate another right hand. So there's a gap there that a guy who understands the rhythm can then use to move forward. Marvin Hagler at different times in one of the biggest shootout rounds in boxing history has Thomas Hearns backed up against the ropes. Marvin Hagler during a shootout is cutting off the ring. And I don't believe it's because Marvin moved as quickly as let's say Ray Leonard or Manny Pacquiao 
guys with great legs. Right? No, I believe it's because Marvin Hagler, it's a rhythm. Marvin Hagler saw the gaps and was prepared to take advantage of the gaps in moving forward. Marvin was reading his opponent and understood what his opponent could and could not do. So, Golovkin against Kel Brook, who has better legs than Golovkin. You'll notice there are times in that fight where Golovkin just runs forward up to Kel Brook. You have to close the distance. You don't have to be able to move your feet the fastest. You just have to be able to take advantage of the rhythm of the fight. The gaps. Right? Let me just say, boxing's all about rhythm. It's the good dancers who are able to get positioning. So here you have Andy Ruiz fighting Anthony Joshua in the rematch. I think we all know Joshua can't throw hard punches backing up. Let's just be blunt. Let me just say two. There was a recent cruiserweight title fight and the winner, Lawrence Okole, called me out after the fight. Said I was being super critical. Hey, this is the super critical part of the sport, folks. This is not a fan site. To the people upset with me criticizing Anthony Joshua, too bad. Andy Ruiz should have known, he should have known, that Anthony Joshua can't throw power shots backing up. That's not his game. Anthony Joshua is moving around outside the pocket in the second fight because he couldn't hang with Andy in the pocket in the first fight. Let's be clear here. Joshua, like Joseph Parker, decided he needed to fight backing up, shooting jabs against Andy Ruiz. Let's remember, Parker wins the title in, an, uh, in a title fight against Andy Ruiz, and that fight was razor close. So Andy needs to figure out, am I fighting Ali? Am I going to run in the pocket like Liston did in the Ali rematch and get dropped? Or am I fighting Anthony Joshua who, when he moves, the power drops? If I can get inside and collapse the pocket on him, I'm not going to get hit with major shots if he's moving backwards. If I force him to lift his feet, the power's going to drop. Right? If Anthony Joshua moved like that against Marvin Hagler, he would have had Hagler in his face, just like Hagler was in Hearns' face, style-wise. Andy needs to channel Marvin Hagler. So the foot speed problem's big. It won't appear in the Ariola fight because Ariola's a guy who fights the same way every fight. Let's call it as it is. So Ariola's going to try to come forward on Andy Ruiz. Right? Andy doesn't have to worry about Ariola moving away from him. And Ariola's going to throw a lot of punches. So if Ruiz has the timing down, he'll have a lot to hit. Right? When you throw punches, you expose yourself. The other thing that Andy needs to fix, I believe he can fix the foot speed problem by practicing. Right? Moving in when another fighter isn't in a position to throw big punches. Literally running, right? Getting out of his rhythm. He has to change up his rhythm in fights. I believe he can do so. He's with Canelo's trainer now, a new trainer, new beginning, maybe a new strategy. The other problem I believe Andy can fix is Andy 6 2. A lot of the guys in the heavyweight division, including Joshua, Joe Joyce. They have pretty good jabs. Usyk. Pretty good jabs. 
Andy has to know that the book on beating him involves movement away behind a jab. Right? The fighter who's moving wants to land punches. Wants to win the round on the scorecards. So Andy needs a little bit more Mike Tyson in him. Look at Prime Tyson. I'm not talking about the Mike Tyson who recently beat Roy Jones. I'm talking about younger Mike Tyson who moved his upper body religiously. Look up Mike Tyson. Andy needs to come up with moves where he could just, as he's moving forward, slip or knock down an opponent's jab. Get inside, set up the pocket where his hand speed is dominant. Now, what I want people to do is to look at the top of the heavyweight division right now. I believe Fury, if he fought Andy, would try to fight the fight that his good friend, Joseph Parker, fought. Fury would be on his back foot the whole fight, just like he was the first Deontay Wilder fight. Right? Andy's top priority, should he fight Fury, has to be spacing. He has to get rid of the distance between himself and Fury. He doesn't have to dance with Fury. He just has to find a way to cut off the ring and get inside on Tyson Fury. Same thing applies for Usyk. Right? Usyk's punch has not carried to the heavyweight division. I don't see him hurting world-class heavyweights. I'm sorry, Chaz Witherspoon, to me, is not a world-class heavyweight at this stage of his career. So, the burden's on Andy. You know Usyk's going to be moving. The burden's going to be on Andy to get physically close to him. Again, spacing is paramount. As fast as Usyk's hands are, I believe Andy is the faster puncher. Andy has the heavier artillery. Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce has a great jab, folks. Great jab. Busted up. Daniel Dubois. Great jab. Here again, if Andy gets by the jab and Joe Joyce has power, and he'll be far too fast for Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce doesn't have great hand speed. Right? So Andy has to get inside and let his hands go, not allow himself to get held. Dylan White. Great jab. Right? Great jab. Here again, though, Dylan White can't match Andy in hand speed. I believe Dillard White also has stamina problem. One man's opinion. Right? He has stamina problems. Here again, I think Dillon White's easier to find than Fury and Usyk. But the point is, Andy has to find them. Andy also cannot stand tall in the pocket. Because Dylan White is two-handed, as I've pointed out before. The two knockdowns in the first Povetkin fight are Dylan White left hands. In the rematch, Dylan White is feasting on right hands. Right? Andy has to be careful. AJ. Andy already beat him once. He knows that if he gets inside on AJ, it's game over. Think about the timing of that first fight. AJ has a disastrous third round. There's plenty of time for AJ to right the ship between the third and seventh rounds. He didn't. Right? He did not. To win the second fight, he needed an entirely new strategy. The third round's not an outlier, because if you feel the third round's an outlier, what about the seventh round? Where AJ is finished. Right? So Andy needs to distinguish between AJ, 
for whom movement is new. Right? We haven't seen AJ throw an explosive right hand moving around the ring while moving. Andy needs to figure out that AJ's not Ali. The next time AJ moves away from him, Andy needs to move with him. He needs to figure out when AJ can throw punches. So this is a huge fight for the heavyweight division. It's a huge fight for Andy Ruiz. Right? Huge fight for Andy Ruiz. Let me also say this too. You know, I'm one of those people who believes that losing a lot of weight is not always the best thing for a fighter. Right? Especially a fighter in their 30s. I saw Chris Bird lose weight later in his career. He looked sluggish. He looked out of it. He didn't look explosive. He got beaten up. Right? This is a guy who gave Vitaly Klitschko a loss. Right? I believe fighters think, oh, if I just get rid of red meat, if I just go vegetarian... If I just lose some weight and I'm smaller, I'll be faster. Right? This is going to be the first fight where Andy comes in. As light as reports say he's going to come in. Right? The jury's still out on whether the weight loss will be a positive or a negative. Right? We've all seen big men move well. Jackie Gleason was a great dancer. Right? We've seen big men who can close the pocket. Right? If I'm Andy, I would focus more on figuring out the timing to increase my foot speed than on losing weight for future fights in my 30s. He's already the fastest handed guy in the heavyweight division. He doesn't need more hand speed. Hand speed isn't the problem, is it? And losing weight doesn't necessarily imply that Andy's going to figure out why he can't close the distance between himself and an opponent. Right? So I do hope he and Eddie Reynoso are working on ways where Andy can run up to an Anthony Joshua and do so in a way where he's slippery where he can slip a jab and get inside. I'm not expecting him to be as coordinated or as fast body-wise as Steve Cunningham was against Tyson Fury. But if Andy's going to look at one Tyson Fury film to figure out how to fight Fury, given Andy's hand speed, I believe it should be that Steve Cunningham Tyson Fury fight, where Cunningham drops Fury. By the way, to his credit, Fury in interviews has talked about that fight. And he openly admits that he was having problems with Steve Cunningham. Right? He adds that Cunningham, of course, was the former cruiserweight champion. An excellent fighter. Right? But just understand, even Fury himself knows that fast, coordinated guys who can slip his jab, who can keep up with his foot speed, who have a hand speed advantage on him, give him problems. Right? Food for thought. Anyway, um, the way I'm playing this is I expect Andy Ruiz to win this fight. I'll hedge the play with the over. But understand, when you're dealing with guys with this kind of hand speed, this could easily be like Andy's fight against Demetrenko. Look at that fight. Where Andy just had too much hand speed. Too much hand speed for an opponent. Who then decided, okay, that's it. You know, I cannot hang. Other times too, understand, if Andy gets Ariola, who's 40, hurt. And then just lets his hands go. A lot of referees will step in at that point. Because, of course, the punches landed without a response, might reach 5-6 in the blink of an eye. So I expect Andy Ruiz to win this fight. I'm looking at this fight to see exactly whether Andy has figured out how to increase his foot speed 
and how to slip a jab. If he has, then he's a threat to everyone in the division. That's how I see it. He's still only 31 years old. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.